Welcome to part one in a series of lessons on hydroponic fertilizers. The first two categories we'll look at are liquids and dry fertilizers. Now, liquids have a lot of benefits. This is how most hobby growers usually start with hydroponics, and that's because it's simple. It, generally, you just add the measured amount and you're done. Uh, get that M in there. Uh, they're great for small scale when you don't need to buy much fertilizer. Um, and usually they're pretty nice because they're adjusted for uh, they're adjusted for pH, so sometimes you just add them and the pH already sort of works out for you, for most water sources. The, the cons, however, though, are, it's expensive. And, and that's because they're usually fairly diluted and it's expensive to ship a liquid. So shipping is expensive and they're diluted. And almost, or at least all of them, pretty much 99% of liquid fertilizers are simply a dry fertilizer that has been added to water and then shipped. So, although these are simple, you, you pay for the ease. The other option, which is more common amongst commercial growers or experienced hobby growers, is the dry fertilizers. Now, their benefit is they are a lot cheaper. <laughs> Almost missed that plus side. So they're a lot cheaper. They come in smaller packages, so shipping is easy. Storage is also easy. Um, that's one of the one of the things that isn't usually thought of, but um, storing large totes of liquid fertilizer can take up a lot of space when the equivalent that would be required for a couple dry bags is usually pretty minimal. Um, and that's because they are concentrated. Now, the, the main con is mixing. It, it takes some time to mix for dry fertilizers. Um, and sometimes people find it a little bit daunting. Luckily, part two of this series will go through how to mix these fertilizers and making it easier will pretty much mix dry fertilizers to create a liquid fertilizer, creating a, a stock solution to get the benefits of liquid fertilizers while getting the benefits of dry fertilizers. Within dry fertilizers, there are a lot of options. You have one part fertilizers, there are two part fertilizers, and then there are many part fertilizers, which usually actually have about 11 parts. I'll just write many, but yeah, it can be about 11 parts. So let's look at each one of these. A one part fertilizer is generally gonna be the most easy to use. So this will be like a liquid fertilizer, it's the simple option. Measure out what the bag says, add it to the water, and you're usually about done. Maybe there's some pH adjusting there. The drawback with a one-part fertilizer is it's difficult to adjust the recipe. All you can do is add more or, or, or add less. But we'll see as a benefit of these other options is you can actually adjust the ratio of the fertilizers based on what you want to accomplish. Sometimes you want to raise your nitrogen um, depending on the season, or you might want to raise your calcium, or sometimes depending on your water source, you might want to adjust your, your recipe. A lot of the times your water coming from well or for city water, it can already carry a lot of calcium, magnesium, uh, sulfur, and with these other recipes or other options, you can actually adjust your inputs so you can take advantage of what's already coming in your water. So one part, it's simple, but you can't adjust. You also have the drawback of it being the most expensive option. So it's gonna be the most expensive option within the dry fertilizers because they're doing all the labor of mixing it and you're, you're paying for that. 
It also comes with the drawback of usually it has low calcium. It also will have low phosphates and low sulfates. And that's because in a one part fertilizer, if you're gonna create a stock solution and you have a high concentration of calcium, phosphates, and sulfates, you'll get precipitation. And we'll, we'll cover this concept in just a little bit. So a, a two part fertilizer is generally made from a premixed base formula. And then it's amended with calcium nitrate. Well, that's a little bit hard to read, but calcium nitrate and also magnesium sulfate, uh, which also goes by the name of Epsom salt. So although it says two parts, it's usually, you know, it's usually base and calcium nitrate, and then depending on the base's suggested recipe, you might be adding magnesium sulfate as well. So the benefit of a two-part fertilizer, as we mentioned earlier, is you can adjust the rate depending on season and water source. It is also the cheapest option. Well, not as cheap as what we'll see over here, but it is cheaper than a one-part fertilizer and it's usually very economical for most farmers. You can make a stock solution with a two-part fertilizer and the main drawback with a two-part fertilizer is mixing. So it is a little bit of work to mix fertilizers, especially if you're mixing directly into your tank. So you're measuring out the grams of each one of these inputs and then adding it to your reservoir. But you can get past a lot of that labor by simply making a stock solution. And uh, let's take a little break right now and we'll look at stock solutions. Stock solutions are when you add your dry fertilizers to liquid at a concentrated rate, so they can be added later to more water to create a nutrient solution. So there's a, so two, two terms right there. You have your stock solution, which is your concentrate, and then your nutrient solution, which is your final formulation, which is fed to your plants. Stock solutions will come at many rates, um, 50, 100, sometimes 200, and that's just their, their concentration. So 50 times the rate of a nutrient solution or 100 times or 200 times. Generally, the 100 times rate is good for people using dosing systems or injectors. It makes the math a little bit easier. So why are we doing a stock solution? We're doing it to separate our calcium from our sulfates and phosphates to avoid precipitation. Generally, your stock A will have your calcium and your stock B will have your phosphates and your sulfates. So let's, uh, let's break down these stocks a little bit. A stock, B stock, okay. So your stock A, in a two-part fertilizer, we'll have calcium nitrate, CaNO3, and you got a little two over here. And your stock B will have your premixed base formulation along with magnesium sulfate, MgSO4. So these salts, when they enter water, they break apart into their individual elements or molecules. So this calcium nitrate will break up into calcium and nitrate. And your magnesium sulfate will break up into magnesium, that's a two plus, and sulfate. So in a nutrient solution, these are all together at low enough rates where you don't have excessive precipitation. And precipitation is when these elements or these inputs start coming together and reforming a salt. When stock A and stock B are added to a, a reservoir at the appropriate rates, you don't have precipitation or excessive precipitation. 
But when they're concentrated, as they are in the stock solutions, you can't have calcium along with phosphate or sulfate, or else you'll get excessive precipitation. And one of the main culprits is calcium precipitating with sulfate. You get CaSO4. And what this looks like is a white grainy salt at the bottom of your tank. And when this happens, your calcium and your sulfate are being pulled out of the solution and turned back into a salt. This is not good for your plants because if they're a salt at the bottom of your tank, it means they're not available to your plants. You don't have calcium moving through your nutrient solution and it's no longer available to your plants. So by keeping them in a stock A and a stock B, you can avoid the problem of a precipitate and keep them stable and separate. Then you simply add equal ratios of stock A and stock B to your reservoir to keep up your, your fertilizer levels. All right, let's go back to our dry fertilizers. The last column we have is the many part fertilizer, which is usually about 11 parts. And the big advantage here is it is the lowest cost of all of the options because you're adding each one of the individual ingredients to create your own premixed base. So you're, you're doing all the labor yourself. This is great if you wanna adjust the rate. You can pretty much adjust it however you want. You can cater it exactly to whatever you need. But it is very difficult for most growers to do this. It takes a lot of math and it's really only applicable at large scale. And that's because when you're doing small batches with many parts, a lot of the ingredients are used at such low rates that it's hard to get a good even mix. That's because some of these are used at really, really low rates. So the, the farms that are actually doing many part fertilizers, about you know 11 part fertilizers well, are usually making stock solutions of a thousand gallons or more, a couple thousand gallons. That's their stock solution. So they can mix large quantities of fertilizer to make sure they're getting a good even mix. If you are not doing large tanks, then you have the problem of storage. Some of these bags of fertilizer you might be storing for years because they're used at such small rates. So great adjustability, low price, but really this is most commonly used by farms that are a, a few acres or, you know, they're very large. And some of these large farms still prefer to use a base formulation supplemented with calcium nitrate and magnesium sulfate just for the ease. So in conclusion, one part's great for getting into this. Um, it's easy and it's gonna be one of the cheapest easy fertilizers to use. I know a dry one part is still going to be cheaper than a liquid one part fertilizer or a liquid multi part fertilizer. The two parts, great for advanced hobby growers, commercial growers. You get the ability to adjust, you have the low price, you can create stock solutions, and you can get past the mixing issues by creating stock solutions. And then the multi part, great if you're a huge farm. The, it's definitely the most economical. You have the greatest flexibility to adjust your recipe, um, but it's difficult for small batches and you have the storage issues. So thanks for joining us in this lesson. In the next one, we'll go over the best way to mix a two-part fertilizer. And then in the lesson after that, we'll go over how to adjust all of your inputs based on season and based on your water source. So I hope you join us for those. Check out some of our other educational videos we have up already. If you have any questions, feel free to email us at infohortamericas at gmail.com. Give us a call. We're happy to answer any of your fertilizer questions and happy growing.